Hi again. Uh, we're going to take a look at problems 48 through 52 on page 437. These are problems dealing with the properties uh, of rectangles and rhombi. So they gave us in this picture that we have a rectangle and its name is PLMN and sort of overlapping with it is a rhombus LKMJ and they ask a series of questions um, regarding segment lengths, etc., or angle measures. Okay, having done this already once, uh, hindsight's a really good teacher. The way you want to approach this problem, and I think probably problems like this, is to go ahead and before you look at what they're asking, put as many marks on the diagram as you can with regards to the properties of, in this case, rectangles and rhombi. For example, we know that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent and they also bisect each other. So that means that in any rectangle we have these four segments congruent. If we combine that with the fact that we know that opposite sides of a rhombus are congruent, then the opposite side to JL would be KM and the opposite side to JM would be LK. So we know all of those segments are congruent to begin with. Also, we know that because of the isosceles triangles created here in this rectangle, we always get two sets of four angles that are congruent. We get that this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle, they're always congruent to each other. Also, the angles next to them are always congruent to each other as well. Now, if we combine that piece of information, finally, with the fact that in a, that a rhombus is a parallelogram, and so alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. This angle is alternate interior to this guy up here, so they're congruent. And this angle is alternate interior with this one. I'm using this line as the transversal, and either that pair of lines is my parallel lines, or that pair is my parallel lines in making those statements. Okay, so we're entitled to all those marks just to begin with. Additionally, and I won't mess up the diagram too much by putting them all in, but every corner of our rectangle is a right angle. So if I know one of the two angles in the corner, I know the other one by subtracting from 90. Okay, let's look at the problems then. 48 gives us the length of LN, which is an entire diagonal, is 10. Well, if that entire diagonal is 10 and these two are equal, they must be 5 each, which means that all of those pieces are 5 each. Actually, I could extend it farther, but I don't need that for this particular problem. It also gives us that LJ is 2x plus 1. LJ is 2x plus 1. They give us really more information than we need. They also tell us that pj is 3x minus 1. So you actually have more than one way to solve this problem. The author gave you more information than needed. I think they probably wanted you to notice that Segment PJ and segment LJ have congruent marks on them, that you've already marked them congruent, or that they're both five, if you will. And to say then that so if they're congruent, they're equal, then 3x minus 1 equals 2x plus 1. Subtracting 2x from both sides and adding 1 to both sides, we get then that x is equal to 2. Now, we could have done it other ways. We could have taken either one of these two and set them equal to 5. Because if LJ, for instance, is 2x plus 1 and LJ is 5, then 2x plus 1 has to be 5. And that's 2x equals 4, x equals 2. So with a, a, the last way you could have taken the 3x minus 1 and set it equal to 5, and that would give you 3x equals 6, but still x equals 2. So there are one, two, three ways to solve that particular problem. And that's because they gave you really more information than you had to have.
Okay, so if you need to pause this to get any of that down, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and erase and get rid of those fives because they were only good for that particular part of the problem. That's a good way for you to work it on your paper or your iPad's great because you can uh, use uh, with my iPad not in front of me. Uh, one of our note-taking programs, GoodNotes is the one I use, and then uh, uh, erase as you need to and use different colors. I'm out of colored uh, uh, markers here at home right now. Okay, on number 49, we've got that angle PLK is 110. Let's go find PLK. PLK. All right. That's a tough one to mark, but it's 110 degrees. Now, so think about this corner here. If I'm just looking at PL and then out here is K. I already know that part is 90 degrees because the corners of every rectangle are 90. There's a point M down and farther down here. Okay. Now, if this whole thing is 110, that means that little critter, that little angle, uh, KLM, has to be 20 degrees. So that's sort of the key here. I'm going to mark this guy in at 20. Okay, let's ask, see what question that they ask us here at 49. They're asking us to find the measure of angle LKM. In other words, this angle out here. Okay, so let's proceed with that idea. Notice that if that angle's 20, then so is the one next to it because they're marked congruent. That means in this rhombus, if we just look at the rhombus up there where we've got angle P, uh, sorry, in the rhombus, this would be J in the middle going up to L, J, L, K, and then M that this whole angle up at L is 20 plus 20 is 40. Okay, now if we under, remember that in any parallelogram, consecutive angles like L and K are supplementary, that gives us the answer to the question. The measure of angle LKM on number 49 is 140. Having the diagram over there marked in advance made that substantially easier. Again, if you need to pause, pause. But I'm going to go ahead and get us set up for problem number 50. And having done this yesterday, without going through and marking this uh, ahead of time, I can tell you this is so much easier to do than it was then. Okay, problem number 50, MJN is 35. So let's go find an angle. MJN, this guy is 35 degrees. Okay, our goal is to find angle MPN. Now I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this right angle. We'll just remember there are right angles in the corners. Angle MPN, this one right here, is the one that we're after. Let me just check that one more time. M, P, N, yep. And we were given M, J, N. Great. Boy, there's just a, a couple good ways to do this one. Um, given that we're after that angle right there, well, if you remember the exterior angle theorem, it said the measure of an exterior angle. And this 35 right here is exterior to triangle M, J, N. Well, the rule says it equals the two remote interiors added together. Well, notice if I put the variable x here for a second, then that guy is x because they're marked equal, then what I have is that x plus x has to equal 35. That's 2x equaling 35. x is 17.5. So in answering their question, the measure of angle m, uh, rather, what did they call that guy? Uh, MPN, MPN, our X there, is 17.5. Now, can you do it without the exterior angle theorem? Well, you certainly can. 
remember, uh, it, without it, you would say, look, if that's 35, it's linear pair, uh, I'll get rid of the J for a second, it has to be 145. And now you'll go X plus X plus 145 equals 180, but you'll get exactly the same answer. Okay, 51. On 51, we have that, well, let's just get rid of a little of our trash here. Start off semi-clean for our problem. This was the point J. All right. They gave us that the measure of MK is 6X. The measure of KL is 3X plus 2. Oh, sorry, plus 2Y. Okay, now before I add the last thing, that's nice to know, but setting these guys equal doesn't really help me a whole lot because I've got two variables involved. Uh, the next statement, Jn is 14 minus x, though, is very helpful. So Jn, 14 minus x. Okay, notice that those two segments are already marked congruent from the work we did at the start. So we would know on this problem, which is number 51, that 14 minus x equals 6x. So that would be 14 is equal to 7x by adding an x to both sides. Dividing uh, by 7 will give us 2 to the value of x. Now, that means that LK up here is 3x, which would be 3 times 2. I'm replacing that x with a 2 plus 2y or simply 6 plus 2y. Now, if he's 6 plus 2y, then this guy right here, km, is equal to him, and he's 6 times x. So that's 6 times 2, our x value, that's 12. Well, remember, those two guys are already marked equal. Let's set them equal. This will be 6 plus 2y equals 12. 2y equals 6, and dividing y equals 1. So our answer is x equals 2 and y equals 1. Again, problem made a lot easier because I knew before I even started those two were going to be equal. I didn't have to go re-reason it again. Okay, again, pause me if you need to. Number 52. Okay, on number 52, we're given that the measure of angle LMP equals the measure of angle PMN. And we're out to find the measure of angle PJL. Now notice uh, the one that we're after. PJL is one of these angles right here where the diagonals are meeting. All right. Um, LMP. LMP, that's my two mark, mark angle right there. Okay. It's equal to the one that's next to it here. It's equal to my one mark angle, which is angle PMN. Well, that means that this angle and this angle are equal, they could both have two marks on them, so every one marker could be changed to two. And what you're seeing now is that these guys in the corners have to be 45 degrees each. If they're going to be the same, add up to 90. So we get 45 and 45, okay? And we get that in every single corner. And what we have then there, 45 and 45 is 90. There's 90 degrees left in the middle here. So we've got a figure that is both a rectangle and a rhombus. 
with the information given, this guy is actually now a square. But the answer to the question is the measure of angle PJL is 90 degrees. Okay, hope that helped. And again, the key to getting these much more easily than one might is to start by putting all your congruent marks on first, and then it sets up the problems much, much more easily. Okay, uh, back in a little bit with some more problems.